Hi everyone! Lighting is such an important part of every space and I think sometimes people don't spend enough time searching for something that looks great while still being functional. I mean function is really important for sure but style and design is also really very important and the good news there are so many styles that will look great and be functional at the same time so there's no excuse. Today I'm reviewing some very popular lights that I see in so many places where other lights could be so much better. I guess these lights have just become automatic options for lighting when in actual fact they're either dated or overdone or just wrong for the space. My clients always complain about being overwhelmed when they visit a lighting store so they tend to fall back on lights they're familiar with. Maybe a version of a light their parents had. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm here to give you alternatives and get you to see a whole new world of lighting so that you're not living in design purgatory and instead you'll have beautiful, interesting, design-friendly lights. Today's video focuses on lighting and it's all about buy this, not this. Yes, of course, the boob light will come up in this video. Stay tuned. Am I allowed to say boob? I know, but that's what they're known as. It's my mission in life to eliminate boob lights everywhere. We can do it together. So let's get to it. I'm a little torn by this first option because this type of light is actually inspired by a classic light fixture that has been in production since 1962. The Arco Modern Floor Lamp. At first glance, I love it. I love it as a modern classic. I love the Carrera marble base and the small details like the beveled corners and the round hole carved into the sides to make it easier to move around. But this light has been reproduced for years because it's so popular and knockoffs are everywhere. And this is part of the reason why this light is on my list today. When there are so many versions of this light, you'll end up using it in ways that just doesn't work. And some of those knockoffs don't even come close to the dimensions of the real Arco lamp. I think it fails as a light fixture above a dining room table. For one, the light base is usually too close that it makes the whole dining room setting uncomfortable to get around. It gets worse if your table is longer too. The light will never sit comfortably in the middle of the table. So it's more of an aesthetic than it is practical and when it comes to dining rooms, you'll want the table to be lit up evenly. Even if your table is smaller or rounder, the geometry of an arc lamp rarely works. Instead, if you're looking for that sleek modern look, you'll find lots of similar light fixtures that would be installed in the ceiling, like this Splugrin Brow Light, designed by the same designer as the Arco floor lamp. Or the Smithfield suspension light that comes in different colors. They're sleek and can be sized and located according to your table size. Now, I've also seen the Arco floor lamps in living room settings, and this works slightly better than the dining room, so long as you're not trying to get that light fixture right above the center of the room. Again, the geometry of the arc and base rarely works. In most cases, the light will be off-centered, which might be okay. Again, there's nothing wrong with asymmetry, but instead of an arc lamp that pulls too much attention away with its high arch, leaving it difficult to light the rest of the room, I think a floor lamp like this is much more interesting because it lights up the space right near its base, much like a table lamp would. Or even this floor lamp with a shortened arc is great. Or if you want to direct light for reading, a floor lamp like the Kelvin by Antonio Citerio, one of my favorite designers, is very discreet and can be moved around much more easily than an arc lamp. I just feel an arc lamp is overdone, and in most cases, it doesn't actually light up the space in the best possible way. So buy this, buy more practical floor lamps with interesting designs that light up the space you need, not any of the arc lamps. I can't believe it, but I still walk into homes with these lights over top of their vanities. Hollywood lights. And the crazy thing is, I've seen some updated versions of these lights too. Wayfair, seriously? I don't know if it's because they're called Hollywood lights that people feel they must be best because they're used for makeup application by stars, but the single strip of light bulbs across the top of a mirror is probably the worst possible solution for makeup and grooming at your bathroom vanity. Unless you have this kind of layout, you won't be giving yourself the right kind of light. But even this should be avoided. Lighting around your vanity is for one thing only. It's task lighting for your face. So it really should be much closer to your face. Any lighting above the mirror or above the sink in the ceiling will cast shadows on your face. To eliminate shadows under the chin, eyes, and cheeks, light fixtures should be mounted on either side of the vanity mirror or on the mirror's surface if it's large enough. 36 inches to 40 inches apart. 
the center of each fixture should be roughly at eye level, approximately 66 inches above the floor. This will guarantee even illumination across the face for grooming. By installing wall sconces on either side of the mirror, not only will it serve you better in terms of lighting up your face, but you'll have so many design options and styles that will add to your bathroom's overall look. I think it's all right to add lights above mirrors in powder rooms where grooming doesn't actually take place as often. If you have a small bathroom and spacing on either side of the mirror is impossible, consider a mirror with lighting built in like this. If makeup application is an important step, you could dedicate an area to this task and outfit it with a makeup mirror like this one as well. Or even with a wall mounted illuminated version like this. The Hollywood strip lights had their moment in the 80s, but with so many other options for bathroom vanity lighting to suit all different designs and styles, it's time to update your bathroom vanity look. Definitely buy some beautiful wall sconces, not the Hollywood strip lights, even if they've been updated. My next light to avoid buying is from the ceiling fan category. I do believe we've all experienced this type of ceiling fan with its frosted glass shades and brass details and decorated blades, or even something like this with caning in the blades. I love caning, but not in lighting. I think we all recognize that ceiling fans need to evolve from this look. And luckily, many of you have already switched out the old country style fans to something newer. But in my opinion, some of these newer options are also not good. So many new feeling, feeling fans, feeling fans. So many new ceiling fans look like this, the propeller. Like it's been repurposed from an old airplane. And some of those shorter blade fans look like old boat propellers. I don't think it should look like it's about to fly away. If it looks like it should propel something, then it belongs in my not buy category. Instead, look for ceiling fans without a lot of ornamentation or decoration. Look for ceiling fans that have a slim profile, one or two finishes. Both of these are timeless. Blades that taper towards the ends have a more contemporary look. New ceiling fans have smaller motors too, so even large diameter fans can be quite sleek. I also love palm leaf ceiling fans for rooms with an indoor-outdoor atmosphere. I think these are classic and timeless. Also, try to avoid two-in-one type ceiling fans where it looks like two lights have become one fixture. Here's a good example. It has a ceiling pendant light fixture in the middle and then two separate fans on either end. Or this one with a crystal chandelier below the blades. Both of these light slash ceiling fans are distracting in the room. So if you need lighting along with the ceiling fan, I encourage you to look for one where the lighting is integrated into the stem. It's discreet and it doesn't look like a potential fire hazard and DIY fail. Are you enjoying this video? If so, go ahead and hit that like button, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been overwhelmed shopping for lighting. I'm hoping I can help. Speaking of that, if you need personalized help from me for your own design challenge at home, you can find me on Patreon. I have several tiers and one of them includes a one-on-one -on -one video consultation with me. Just head to patreon.com slash designchicky for all the details. Next up on my list are lights that are officially known as the flush mount ceiling light, but more specifically known as the boob light. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. The great thing about these types of lights is that they don't take up a lot of room. They sit close to the ceiling, so if you have a light near a door, like an entry hall or a foyer, a flush mount works well because it likely won't interfere with the door swing. But without a shadow of doubt, this flush mount looks outdated. It's completely out of fashion and not in a way where it will or should come back into style. I'm telling you this because it's true. There is no reason you have to have this light in your hallway, in your living room, or in your entry hall. We've got so many more options for ceiling lights that sits close to the ceiling. Today's flush mount should look more like this instead. Let's say you have a more traditional home. Look for lights with a glass shade like this milk glass schoolhouse fixture or this flush mount in this classic shape. If you're looking for something with a bit more pizzazz or whimsy, you'll find lots of options as well, like this light designed by Kelly Wurstler. 
being so close to the ceiling, you'll want to consider how the light casts shadows on the actual ceiling. It could be quite dramatic. Or how about this whimsical fixture from CB2? For something a little more vintage, this one from CB2 is also great. That white finish against the gold makes it for me. I love the two-toned finish in this fixture as well. Great for a more modern, sleek space. This one is available through my Amazon storefront. I'll have a link below. And you can never go wrong with a linen drum shade. This will work in so many settings. The linen shade is just soft enough for that lovely glow. It always looks tailored to me. And if you've got a little more ceiling height, you can always look for a semi-flush mount like this one. The point is there are so many creative lights these days that can be mounted close to the ceiling that will also speak to your style and enhance your space. Definitely buy any of these lights and not the boop light. So here's your takeaway. Lighting makes a huge difference in the look and feel of your space. Don't just pick out standard fare. Look for lights that provide enough light for the task at hand while still adding to the overall look of your space. There are so many lights to choose from, but if you need a floor lamp, a wall sconce for your vanity, a ceiling fan for your indoor outdoor room, or a ceiling mounted fixture, always look for something special. Let's eliminate the boob light forever. Lighting can make or break your whole design. Trust me, it's worth the time and effort. If you're interested in lighting and want to know more about my own favorite lighting designs, check out my lighting icon videos. So far, I've got two in the series, but I might be adding another one very soon because lighting is that important. I'll link them both below. Also, I've helped quite a few of my patrons with their own lighting challenges, so a big shout out to them. We've tackled so many projects, including some custom home space planning and bathroom renovations. Head over to my Patreon page if you need some personalized help from me. Thanks for watching this little design tip. I'll have lots more design tips just like this one coming soon. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. We've got new videos every week. And as always, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It helps to grow this channel. See you soon.